Hello everyone. So today I'm going to be showing you how we can create users and give them particular permissions within our Total Lab 21 CFR and GXP compliant software. Everyone. So today I'm going to be showing you what kind of settings we've got to define our user groups and permissions and levels within our GXP software. Now, once again, a reminder for you, our GXP and 21 CFR compliant module fits around all of our existing software. Same spots, SpotMap, clicks one d Pro and Fretix 1D at the moment. So these, the settings that I'm going to go through with you today and the kind of the user permissions and the, the granularity within the user groups, they apply to all of our different pieces of software. So this is the admin tool that we use to do kind of all of the, the, the in-depth settings that controlled our secure solution. Uh, and if you come down to this section here under users, this is where we create our users, create their password and kind of give them the, the properties and the permissions that they're going to need to perform their role within the lab. So if I come across here and click on new user to add a new user, I get this dialog box, which is where I control what, what kind of permissions the, the user needs as part of their role. So obviously if we're using, if we're creating a user within just our GXP software, we give them a username and a password, which will be defined by the kind of the password security settings that you've set previously within the software. Or we can have the Windows Active Domain user uh, connection. So in this, we would just put in the domain name of your of your LAN, of your local area network within your um, institution. And then we would put in the user's existing Windows username and it would fetch their credentials from the current, well, well the Active Directory within this domain. Or a local Windows user is if you've got a Windows computer that is air-gapped or separate just within the lab connected to your scanning device. Um, but you want to still use the Windows user logon, you don't need to have an Active Directory for that. You just need to put in the machine name and the username for the user that you want to control. So we've got a couple of different ways of uh, offering users the ability to create different users and, and how they log in and things like that. But you'll see that regardless of how the user uh, wants to log in, how the, however they want their credentials to be handled, They've still got all of the same permissions available to them under these tick boxes. So just to quickly run through the basic level when you create a new user, the default is the permission to add a project, check out a project and check out a read only copy of a project. Now, this would be the kind of the lowest level, the analyst level, the, the you know, the junior scientist level of permissions. So they've got the ability to create projects and do their analysis work and check out things, but they haven't got anything beyond that. So the emergency login permission, you need at least, if you want to enact this on site, and we would recommend that you have this as a backup, you need at least two users, whether they're a GXP user or a Windows user, again, it doesn't matter, uh, with this permission. So the ability to perform an emergency login. Access log allows the user that you've created to have access to the access log for this admin tool and I'll go into that in a bit more detail in another video. QC allows the user to have the permission to perform QC checks, quality control checks. If you've got the client option to require QC before analysis, the person with the QC permission uh, is, is the one that has to perform that sign off. Uh, so you've got the, speaking of sign off, you've got the ability to um, designate who you want to have the power to sign off projects. So this would typically be a lab manager or a senior scientist that would be overseeing a team. Uh, we've got the ability to have self sign off, so you can sign off your own projects. So if you were, you know, uh, a senior scientist, a lab manager, someone that had a lot of experience within the lab and was in a position of trust, you might be uh, able to, if it fits within the SOP for your site, you might be able to hold the self sign off permission and uh, prevent, you know, prevent it being necessary that you have to send your project off and wait for someone else to sign it off. And admin login. Now, admin login is the permission that gives users access to this admin tool. So, someone, an IT admin or the lab manager or the, the person that you would trust with the ability to navigate the settings behind the 21 CFR solution, 
the person with the technical know-how to configure it and add new users, whoever you want to have that permission and to do that, perform that function, would need the admin login and that is what gives people, and they would just log in with the normal password, but it's what gives people the, the right to create new users and things like that. So it's really quite an important permission um, to be having control of. And it allows us to keep this tool, the admin tool where we create new users and set up the program, it allows us to keep that behind a, a password. Um, so allows us to have a certain amount of security to make sure that anyone that's creating new users and controlling permissions of users is someone that's in a permission of trust. It's not open to every analyst, everyone that's using the, the software. It is there. There is kind of a, a checks and balances to this. As ever, thanks for watching. And if you'd be interested in trying out our GXP solution for our image analysis software within your lab using your images fitting into your uh, lab structure, please check out the links in the description below or get in contact with us.